Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. With me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. S&P up three points, Dow down 66, uh, NASDAQ up 80, and the relentless, uh, the, uh, relentless March to the Sea continues. Uh, bears cannot be happy. Uh, I've been hearing the end of the world for at least four, maybe six weeks. Uh, hadn't happened quite yet. Uh, I'm just wondering if they're going to have any money when the market actually does pullback. Markets do go higher and lower. But if the market going higher and lower is chained uh, to the incredible pessimism uh, that I see, I'm thinking maybe we, maybe could we hit 3,400 just on the incredible bearish sentiment uh, over the bones, mostly crushed, of bears uh, that uh, can only see devastation, depression. Um, the ones that I hear, the most vocal ones, I think they sit around w reading Dr. Kevorkian's book, uh, Final Exit. I, I don't understand the obsession with uh, the end of the world. But eh, markets go higher and lower. Just generally, I've noticed when everybody has decided that the end is nigh, the market goes up. And guess what? Every end is nigh, eh, it, hadn't, it hadn't come by. So keep betting on the end of the world. It'll only happen once. And, of course, there'll be nobody on the other side to give you any cash because it's all going to be over. So betting on the end of the world, probably not a good uh, thing. Markets do go higher and lower. I'm not Pollyannish that way. But uh, I'm not going to live in a world where I want to slit my wrists every day. There's a, I mean, I play this for a reason. And that is that you can be bearish and positive. You can be bearish or you can be positive and maybe even a little afraid of the market. But uh, an incredible level of pessimism generally tells you you're on the wrong side. Don't you knock it off with them negative waves. Why don't you dig how beautiful it is out here? Why don't you say something righteous and hopeful for a change? Always with the negative waves, Moriarty. Always with the negative waves. I, I kind of almost feel like these folks are uh, in the halftime, and the coach comes out and just goes, hey, you're going to lose. Eh, why don't you just go, why don't you just go in the showers there and slit your wrists? It's all over. It's done. Um, I'm kind of off my soapbox on that, but stop it. You're not helping anybody. Markets go higher and lower. You want to make a case for it. Wait for a signal. And in the meantime, don't inflict all the negative waves on everybody else. Hope for the best, plan for the worst. But uh, if you want to know why the markets are going higher, that is because most people that want to make money are planning for the worst but they're hoping for the best. Now, has the market gone too far too fast? Well, we'll find out soon enough. But uh, very hard to uh, plan on the end of the world tomorrow and go long today, even if you could make a few shekels along the way. It is time to divorce yourself from dogma and move on to making money in the markets. But uh, that is just one man's opinion. So what else do we have going on in the markets today? Well, it is option or, uh, options expiration week. As we said last week, it was starting to bias 
uh, heavily to the upside from Wednesday on. On uh, Friday's options expiration certainly look like we get to 3,000, maybe even higher. And my guess is that everybody will short right when the cash gets to 3,000. And then, of course, they'll have to be bucked off. That may take us to 3,100. Um, the only thing that will make me or is giving me a bit pause right now is some of the stocks having some huge pops today and big gaps. That does not mean the market is ready to turn, but does give a signal that probably within a couple of weeks you could see it. Um, the best thing you can do if you are bearish is wait for a good signal. Generally, just the pervasive pessimism is enough to push more traders over the edge and just say we've we, it's got we got to take a chance here. And if you put a stop in that's tight, I don't see any problem with that. I do uh, see about the 10th time that you shorted and you've uh, stopped out. That's a problem. Uh, I don't think there's an AA for for uh, stock traders, but maybe there should be a 12-step program after you uh, have decided that you're going to go against the market at all costs. But, you know, we've got that many people out here. They continue to short with abandon uh, in the markets. Eventually, they may be right. Uh, temporarily, they are quite wrong. I don't see that changing before the end of this week. And as I've said, uh, if the prevailing short interest continues to grow this way, we could go all the way uh, to the big three-day weekend at the end of this month. Uh, some people have asked me, why do I think the market is going higher? And I think they are looking past it. But uh, whether it's uh, the data that we talked about on Friday where 98% uh, of all the tests came back negative in Florida, or you look at the announcement on Saturday from the uh, state of Georgia, I think, yeah, Georgia uh, and Kemp, uh, where uh, he sees, even though he opened up and took a lot of heat for it, the numbers continue to go uh, down significantly. Um, I, I feel like people are not happy that the numbers are going down. They want them to go up. And I don't understand that. Someone call in and explain to me why we should hope for the worst and plan for probably not the best. But that's it. I, I'm an optimist. Maybe that's my character flaw. Anyway, uh, I'll get off that for the moment. We'll get into a little bit of history when we come back. But uh, nice pops. And this is where I start getting worried. At the lows, I'm generally fairly greedy. At the highs, I'm kind of fearful. And that is generally just the opposite of what people do and why I think I make money consistently over time. Uh, Paul Tudor Jones was on this morning. And he was actually fairly optimistic in his interview a lot more than his article over the weekend. But I always loved uh, one of the things he said, which um, I'll look up and quote it exactly, but it mostly goes like this. Most people say that the big money is in the middle after the market's proved itself on the way uh, off the lows and gone to the highs, and you hit that big middle. He says, I've always made money at the extremes of the market. I kind of uh, am that way too, and maybe uh, being a quant, uh, looking at uh, data, it's easier to see panic, despair, and mania. We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1894, wireless radio is born with Marconi sends a radio wave three quarters of a mile. Three years later, the Macar uh, Ma Marconi Company will successfully communicate ship to shore over a distance of 12 miles. Marconi's work leads to the commercialization and proliferation of most of radio technologies we know today. Um, I didn't know that they were still in business. At least they were in business in the 90s. I ended up uh, working out a deal and uh, making – they have a company, part of Marconi, that made trackballs. And I ended up uh, getting a contract to import them uh, into the United States. They're very nice trackballs, by the way. Didn't sell a lot of them, but uh, I didn't know that they were still around. But at least they were around in the 90s. And of course, uh, it – well, the, the radio technology at that time was basically a spark plug. And it uh, took well, mostly into the late, I'm going to say, 1915, 1916, before voice really started to work. And, of course, by 1921, radio was big in vogue and started the big technology move. Uh, of uh, the 1920s that led to the pop in 1929, and that was radio. RCA uh, was the uh, apple of the time, and uh, we had Motorola uh, who made power supplies so you didn't have to use batteries in your radios that lasted all about five, ten minutes. Big car batteries used to go in those things. You used to call them farm radios. Anyway, they had battery replacers. They weren't even called power supplies at the time, but uh, battery replacers that plugged in the wall and gave 12 volts for your big radio set uh, in your bed in your uh, living room. And yeah, it wasn't even in your bedroom. You had they had them in the the place where the television in another 30 years would end up going. But uh, I do digress. On this day in 1894. Let's get to the, some of the stocks that are moving. Uh, as uh, the top of the hour, uh, uh, Tommy uh, 
O'Brien said. Uh, it had a lot of action in AMC. Uh, the story was that they were going to, or AMC, or let me put it this way, Amazon was going to buy AMC. Uh, there's a problem when a story probably is good, and that is that it makes a lot of sense, so it may be right and true. Uh, AMC, uh, uh, but uh, I've got a couple of emails on what I think is going on. There probably was an approach by Amazon to buy AMC. They signed a document that said if it ever hit the papers, we're not talking another minute and the deal does not go through. That's generally the way these things are done. And somebody shoots their mouth off at the uh, company that's going to get acquired because uh, guess what? They thought that they were going to get nothing for their shares. Now they're going to get double nothing. But that's a whole lot more than real nothing for their shares. And they shoot their mouth off and it becomes uh, something that hits the thing. I think this was about eight bucks pre-market maybe. Can't remember. Uh, it's still up. But, of course, uh, they were looking at, uh, at uh, possible uh, bankruptcy sayings. Uh, it's not a, a good three-gap play, but it's fairly, this gap, last gap, is really kind of what you're looking for in most of the other stocks that we're talking about uh, that could make a significant high and then roll off of those. Uh, we've had a lot of emails about the Wayfair. Uh, and I still, what is it? Was it? Did we talk about it on Friday? I think we did. I'm still looking for one more big gap that's somewhere around 20 bucks higher in Wayfair before it makes its highs. Uh, you get two gaps, 75% chance that you get a third gap. So you don't really want to bet most of the time uh, on hitting a high before you get that third gap. Uh, third gap, you will. 75% of the time, come back and fill at least that gap. And more of the time, about half the time, you'll come back and fill eventually all three of those gaps. And that's generally why I'm so interested in this pattern, but it does not come around that long. Other things going on in the market, and that is Cardinal Health. Uh, and, of course, it gapped up, fill the gap Today, that gap goes back to the 5th of March. They had uh, 3.4 million shares. You got that already and a little bit more. Kind of a little bit of a doji out here. Uh, you've got now two big gaps in this one. Could you get the third gap back to 58 bucks? I think the answer is possibly. Um, but uh, certainly a nice move today. You're going to have all the volume you pretty much need. Uh, and uh, you've gapped over this horrible down day on the 30th of April. So looks good. My guess is you'd want to look at this thing at 58 after a gap up. Maybe it goes sideways for a few days. Then it gaps up. You get no volume back here at about 57, 58. Uh, you got three gaps for a possible replay to 45. CHK, Chesapeake Energy. I think they had earnings this morning or lack of them uh, down on a little bit of volume. Uh, some discussion about CMG in the den just before I left. And uh, you're back up at the highs. I think we had a phone call about this. I was you, you almost go nuts thinking that it could actually do it, but it made it uh, their technology uh, for drive through. And being able to order while you're either in line far before you ever hit the uh, the window, uh, the order window or order kiosk before the window. Uh, but uh, a lot of what they've done was slick and it worked well. Uh, you're back up with the volume you had on February 20th. So this is not negative, but uh, positive. And of course, uh, I continue to think that the, uh, I used to write headlines for Andy Heck uh, for Seeking Alpha articles because he'd always write these really boring headlines and good articles. And I said, let me write a few of these snappy, snappy uh, uh, headlines. Kind of reminded me in Patton when he went to the uh, priest and give, said, I want a snappy prayer that'll make the weather change. But uh, I wrote some nice ones, but I always like that. Uh, CMG has hit a titanic iceberg of inter, intergestion. Intergestion? Intergestion. 
I always thought that was my best title of all. Catchy, snappy, and uh, back up at the highs. Uh, okay. Marriott, eh, gap down a little bit. No big deal there. PFE, Mr. Pfizer, eh, up a little bit. Eh, not much to say there. SNE, Mr. Sony, up just a little bit. Again, not much going on there. Tesla, got a bunch of emails uh, asking about Tesla. Uh, of course, he's uh, out raining on uh, the uh, Politburo in California who doesn't want him to open up at any price or any cost or any date. And uh, saying he's going to pick up his uh, toys and go to Nevada. Is uh, Tesla going to be the last company to leave? There Are there any other companies in California? They've made it incredibly burdensome to stay there. We'll be back in a minute. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Um, I've said I don't trade bonds or spend a lot of time on bonds. One of the problems with bonds, treasuries, all that stuff, is that there's little or no data to trade with them. Uh, three years ago, maybe three years, maybe a little less than that, we talked about FINRA, the organization that's supposed to self-police the stock markets and trading and all that stuff. And do they do the job we want? No. 
to have they made advances into making at least some of this stuff transparent? And the answer is yes. We now have bond data. It is weekly. If you want the link uh, to the bond data, uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. I put it in the den. Uh, the DIN, uh, it, I mean, the uh, data is called Trace Treasury Aggregate Statistics. Uh, illustrate the trading volume in U.S. Treasuries reported trace for the prior week. They do have to uh, actually uh, report this now. And they've done it for two, maybe three years. Uh, it is now public, and you can find the weekly data at those links. It's not as good as data uh, as daily. But it is better than nothing, which is what I and why I stayed away from bond trading a great deal. The report reflects trade activity from Saturday to the following Friday. The information is aggregated by security subtype bills, floating rate notes, nominal coupons, and treasury inflation protected securities, which are tips. The data is fairly, uh, further aggregated into alternate trading system and inter-dealer, dealer-to-customer total categories. So if you've been uh, trying to figure out how uh, to trade bonds and, and either you're doing okay and looking for more data or, like me, stayed away from it because uh, you really didn't think you had much of an edge, uh, most of this stuff is well known to the, uh, the big uh, houses of the street, but uh, a little too tough for the ears of the minor children out here that might actually get into bond trading. Uh, it is uh, in a spreadsheet form, so you can save them all and, and do that later, or maybe build a larger spreadsheet over time. But uh, this is at least some level of data in what's going on behind the background of bond trading and uh, yeah, take a look at it. Anyway, if you want that, you can always email me at path at tfnn.com. Back to the market. Uh, Tesla, I don't see anything that really changes here. My guess is it is going to go back and try the 870, probably 880 area again for expiration, um, which is a nice move higher. But that April 30th test came in with uh, almost uh, 28 million shares, which is more than the previous March 3rd high. The gap down happened only with 15 million shares uh, for the 24th of February. The gap higher came with 25 million shares. So 28 million share reversal on April 30th was pretty good, but you had a lot of volume, so you're probably going to go up there and retest it. There has been no shortage to the amount of people piling on uh, in Tesla uh, to the short side. As I said, these tend not to find highs until everybody quits shorting. It's not as bad as it once was, uh, but uh, we're still looking at um, maybe 20, 20, 25 percent on average for Tesla. So one out of four shares every day is shorted. Uh, those people are extremely attractive uh, targets for short sellers. Uh, well, not short sellers, but for those wanting to cause a squeeze and go after short sellers. But I suspect you're probably going to see uh, that 870, 880 range for expiration on Friday. There's too many people piling in on this still. If that drops this week, I'll let you know, but I don't see anything that really changes uh, that too much. Okay. Uh, what else do we have out here? Oh, uh, TSM, uh, some discussion about uh, trying to lure uh, Taiwan Semiconductor to the United States along with Samsung and Intel and the rest of them. Uh, the president kind of warning them uh, what would happen if uh, to their company if uh, the Chinese decided just to go over and snatch Taiwan, then wouldn't it be nice to have a leg uh, or somewhere else to go if everything goes to hell in a handbasket? Um, but that's it. David uh, Berkshire has been tested this level three times. Is it time to buy? No. I don't think, uh, I don't see any reason why to buy Berkshire ever. It's way too uh, 
bloated and large to get any kind of reasonable return on investment. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I don't think that there's a reason to buy it ever or sell it ever. I mean, if you bought it 100 years ago, yes. Now it doesn't matter. Uh, under Armour, a little uh, Under Armour odor, Under Arm odor, uh, on uh, this not doing well, blaming uh, the virus, uh, blaming whatever, the food they ate last night. Down, uh, but uh, really what they should be blaming is the fact that there aren't a lot of football games and basketball games and baseball games to push their merchandise on for advertising and out of sight, out of mind. Uh, this is coming back down to hit this gap up uh, from the six. Uh, you got some decent volume out here today. Eventually, this may be a good candidate. I just don't see it. Maybe it tests the low with lighter volume. Waste management, um, not a lot happening, down just a little on light volume. So that's about it. Uh, to, to, let's go back to a uh, okay. question about ZM. Okay. Okay, spiked uh, 44 million shares on April 24th. Uh, you're into that with seven, let's call it eight million shares at this time. Uh, Zoom video communications. Uh, I don't know. I frankly would be more of a, or thinking of being more a seller than a buyer on this uh, if it could retest the 181.50. Uh, if it does it with like 10 million shares, goes over it maybe for a day or two, still has no juice, uh, then I would look at it. And, you know, you got probably $70, $80 pullback in this when, uh, the, uh, when the headlights are off of it, uh, things move into the summer. Um, I think you're probably going to have a big sell candidate. I really don't understand why uh, they're thought of as being head and shoulders among the rest. Um, I mean, it's not like anybody else can't do the exact same thing if they wanted to and start a company. I don't see a moat. Um, they were just in the right place at the right time. Uh, generally, those things don't stick. Um, gyms. Zoom video doesn't do gyms, do they? I don't understand. That. Okay, be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're up uh, eight and a half points on the S&P cash Dow might go positive today nasdaq up 99 question about what i was doing i was i got too cute by half uh trying to go long amd um i thought that they could still run it back down to 49 as a possibility but they were doing about 35 percent short interest for every day last week i knew it wouldn't hold but i thought that i could buy it this morning and i looked at it it was uh what uh 5280. I blinked and it was 54. I blinked again, it was 55. Um, most of these look like they're going to go back up and retest what's going on. You got all the volume in the world too. You got uh, 57 million shares. You, you, you know, 58 would be okay. You got 72 on April 20th. I think you could get into that um, at that level too. So. Um, I don't know what else to tell you about that. It looks good. Uh, let's take a look at the SMHs. And like I said, I just got, I thought I'd have time to buy it this morning. And it went by. But if you want to talk about a stock that has incessant shorting to the point of 35% every single day last week and into the week before, those people could not hate it anymore. And I'm trying to find out why the, why they think it's going out of business. It's like uh, shorting Apple. I didn't understand it when the caller called last week. There are stocks out there that will be weak, that will come back late. Um, you want to wait for opportunities in those sectors, not in the ones that are going to do well now. Uh, to, to do Vanek uh, SMHs. Uh, the down day of the 30th, you had 7 million shares. You're back up into that with 2 million shares today. So if you are thinking that maybe we've kind of come close to a high, the SMH is at least not really having a lot of volume in here today. They may find a respite right under 140 here. Although uh, I continue to see huge amounts of shorting in it. And generally, like I said, when they give up on that, which is eh, somewhere around 20% a day now, or has been for the last week, uh, it can go up a little while until those shorts give up. Uh, again, you're looking for some kind of spike uh, that says a high is in. That spike normally is intraday, reverses, and maybe you get some retests on it a few times, but that generally tells you that you're pretty much on the end of that road. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Uh, question about me looking at the TBT, or the TLT, excuse me. 
Do I see anything out there? And did I see anything in the data? I don't think with uh, five weeks of data or whatever that I really can make a good call on that from that. I like that we got actual volume when things happened on the TLT. Um, taking this uh, daily data that we get from the market and putting it together with a weekly, it's probably going to take some effort. But I think I may need a couple of years of data from FINRA before I'll even think about using it uh, for the market. But it is kind of nice. I thought maybe they would not start publishing that data, uh, seeing the uh, problems with the market. But it's coming out. And they're not going to, they said they're at least, I emailed uh, one guy that I know there, and they're not saying that they're going to get rid of it. They're going to allow it. Uh, question about Apple and options. As I said uh, last week to the caller, I would not be short Apple. Uh, it basically got to the level where you would look for resistance. Um, a good move out here today to 315.93, nothing new in this one. Uh, 32 million shares down on the 21st of February. It's into that today. Is it a rousing endorsement? No. But again, another stock where people can't quit shorting it. And uh, as long as there's momentum, uh, it is going to be problematic. Uh, on Friday, you still had uh, almost uh, 18, almost 19 million, uh, 18 percent, 19 percent short sellers in Apple. Um, not a big surprise that it went ahead and gapped up a little or moved up a little higher. When people quit shorting, my guess is that it will come down. Now that we've Busted through uh, this uh, gap down of the 24th, uh, 326.34 is open. Uh, got a question, uh, what does options, uh, what does the options curve look like? Uh, to, 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 let me get that ready here. Is that right? Yep, yeah, there it is. Okay. Now, this was uh, options for Friday, uh, but we'll look at the spies here. Um, the bias is slightly bullish, really all the way up to about 305 in the spies. So um, yeah, maybe even a little less, 302. Let's call it 302 on the spies. Now, of course, there's not a direct um, translation, but the way I'll look at it is that we're probably going to go up to uh, 300 on the spies for Friday, and at that point, you know what? What do you do other than uh, figure out that everybody is probably going to think that that's exactly where they want to sell? Now, options actually say that they're not really worried about higher prices or think that they could get as high as 330. Um, don't think that's going to happen. Generally, these converge. That is, the projection comes down as uh, the uh, as the options move up, and they kind of meet in the middle. That's why I'm thinking somewhere around uh, three thousand on the S and P cash. Uh, you know, probably two ninety nine on the spy, something like that, two ninety eight maybe. But it'll it'll be close. It could get a little bit. Weird. There is a disconnect between the spies and the S&P cash a little bit, but not much. Anyway, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648 uh, for the last little segment we have coming here. Uh, okay. Oh, got a question on what it would look, what do those look like for Apple? I can't remember. Eh. It's just bullish. Uh, no one's bearish on Apple until you get to about 355. I'm thinking 220, or 325 is probably a good area for it to probably start running into resistance. Options, actually, they don't want any part of being bearish until it gets to 350, maybe 355. I don't think it's going to get there, but I think 325 is probably a good target. Uh, if you've been long for a while, uh, you think you're going to hold it into options expiration? Probably pretty good. Uh, after options expiration on Friday, uh, we're going to go into uh, the time where we wait for the three-day weekend. Volume, of course, always going to be declining 
until we get into Memorial Day. And at the same time, uh, if we see uh, short uh, sales continue to be high, one of the most bullish things is declining volume in a market and higher short interest as a percentage. We'll be back in a bit. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as a number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. We don't have a lot uh, this week to move the market uh, other than uh, I think there's going to be some Fed news. Uh, but uh, I'm in earnings. Don't have a lot to move the market. Wednesday night, we do have Cisco. Um, they're kind of trending up. There's a gap. Uh, my guess is that when we hit it on Wednesday, it will be very close to this gap down on the 24th of February. Uh, to, 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 that was about uh, to 45 bucks. Yeah, let's call it. Yeah, probably in the high 44, something like that. Uh, 43.65 the high today. So could we kind of pop up into that little gap? I think so. Low 44s, maybe 45-ish as we go along. And, of course, uh, the big star of uh, uh, after the start of the lockdown has been web services. They are nothing if but uh, Cisco's domain. Um I'd have, I, I don't know if I'd be thinking I'd want to be long 
uh, if I wasn't already. But uh, I certainly don't think that there's any real discussion out here about them tanking on earnings. So at this point, I just, just suspect we're kind of in this ratcheting move where more people will short. The volume will decline. It'll be easier for stock operators to push the market back up. We'll get into that somewhere around uh, uh, Memorial Day. And at that point, you might have some kind of idea of a lot of stocks and maybe even the market wanting to pull back. I don't get a great sense that we're going to blow up next week or that we're going to blow up before Friday's expiration. Um, we may be 95% or 98% of the way to a high. Uh, and we may just see kind of a, a whack-a-mole where we see stocks really have huge gap higher and then give it all up in the next couple of days. That's kind of a pattern before market hits highs that can be sold and shorted. We'll watch for that this week. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to, and we will see you here. Same bat channel, same bat time.